Welcome to Daytona Beach, Florida, home to Hankster's Hot Rods, Muscle Car, and Collector Car Showroom, where we own all of our vehicles. We are not a consignment dealership. If you're watching us on YouTube today, please be sure to visit our website, hanksters.com. This is where you can find all of our most current inventory. We never take our YouTube videos down, and we have two locations, Daytona Beach, Florida, and Homer City, PA. And whether the video was shot three days ago, or three months ago, or three years ago, it stays up. However, when a vehicle is funded in full, comes down off of our website, letting you know it's no longer available, and drops into our sold category. The muscle car market, collector car market, the hobby, um, the desirability to own a classic car is through the roof right now, um, which is a great thing for us and a fun thing for all of you guys. Uh, buying a classic car, owning a classic car is fun, has a lot of nostalgia. You get a lot of looks, honks, car shows, you know, get to buy little trinkets for it online and, you know, make it your own. But um, I don't know what the deal is with these particular cars right now, but um, desirable, desirable, desirable. 1967 Chevrolet Chevelle. And when I say desirable, I mean all Chevelles. We are selling the heck out of 66 through 70 Chevelles right now. They sell almost immediately. This one is what you would call, uh, you know, a definite muscle car. 502 motor. Um, obviously not the numbers matching motor. Uh, it was not a 502 when it started life. It was a real SS car though. It is a 138 VIN, so it is a true SS uh, 1967 Super Sport. Power brakes, power steering, no AC, but you don't need AC with the horsepower this car puts out. It'll be, the wind will be whipping fast enough through the uh, windows that you'll be cool. Call tag is on the car. Um, we'll take a still photo of that so you can see it. You can break it down. I don't know if this is the car, uh, the color of the car started life as or not. You know, if you guys want to do that homework, you most certainly can. That's why we take a picture of the call tag. Golden black. SS designation on the uh, front grille. Does say 427. It's not a 427 under the hood. Um, it is a 502. Um, again, the car's golden color. Driver quality paint job on the car. Um, we'll walk around the car, see if there's any areas of concern that I can point out to you on the paint. Um, it does have a 427 designation on the front driver's side fender with the flags. Again, not a 427. Five-star Krager uh, wheels all the way around the car. Uh, radial tires in the front. It has uh, drag slicks in the back. Dual chrome mirrors. This is a Florida car, so you have your tint strip across the top. A lot of people do that down here to keep the sun out of your eyes in addition to the sun visors because it's always sunny in Florida. That's why they call it the Sunshine State. Um, door gaps on the car are fantastic. If you look at the uh, front of the driver's side door to the fender and the rear of the driver's side door to the rear quarter. Uh, door gaps are uniform all the way down on the car and the body lines are nice and straight. Tinted glass all the way around the car. Black vinyl top. Um, I'll look on the passenger side for you guys as well but there's no rust on the vinyl top um, coming through whatsoever on the driver's side. Inside the car, uh, it is an automatic, center console, bucket seats. Uh, does look to me like it's the original steering wheel. Um, I got the high dollar, $150 Chevelle floor mats coming for the car. Today is Wednesday, they will be here Friday. So um, those are coming. The ones that were in there were just ugly, dirty. Um, the carpeting itself, however, is fantastic. Um, I got the real nice um, expensive auto loop mats with the uh, gold Chevelle sewn into them. So that's, uh, you know, th those are coming. Um, and we will take a photo when we get those in. We'll take a photo of them in the car so that you can see them as well. Uh, the dome light does illuminate when you open up the uh, driver's side door. Um, also, the interior, from what I can tell, you have rear seat belts, OEM. You can see the Fisher Body logo on the uh, seat belts. I don't see any tears whatsoever in the rear seat. Little tiny wear mark here on the driver's seat. It's not a tear, it's just a wear. Uh, you know, this is plastic or nylon that runs through here, and when you get in and out of the driver's seat, there's a little wear mark there. 
Uh, dash pad looks good, center console looks good. How about we take a closer look at the interior when we're in the car doing the test drive. Uh, armrest looks good, door panel looks good. Doors line up nice and flush down at the quarter into the rocker. Super Sport SS designation on the uh, rear quarter because it is an SS car. Do have a little tiny uh, crack right there. You can barely see it, but it is noticeable. It's a little crack in the paint right there. Body lines on the car are really good. They're really good. Um, the rear, now you, you won't be able to see it in the video, I can guarantee it, because I can almost not see it, and I'm standing right next to the car. Um, the rear window is cracked. Now, we do have a new piece of glass. I'm not going to put it in because the glass is not leaking and you can barely see it because it's tinted, but it is there. If you want the car and you want to negotiate that into the deal, I have the glass here. I can have the glass put in. It's probably about $200 to have the glass put in and we can do that. But um, popping the trunk, there's the glass. So um, we did not photograph it in the uh, photos because if it was in the photos, you'd probably be like, well, what the hell is that? And I'm telling you, it's the rear window glass for that. So um, trunk looks good. It's nice and solid. There's no, uh, you know, no rust holes, no rod holes, no trunk mat, no spare, no jack. So if, uh, you know, we're doing a video presentation or a photos uh, and there's no spare photographed or jack photographed, then one does not come with the car. Um, deck lid, big deck lid on our Chevelle here, and uh, it fits nice to the rear quarters. The rear panel's in great shape. Again, you have your SS designation in the center of the panel, uh, directly in the center of the tail lights, and then of course your reverse lights there down low, chrome tips coming out the rear, and then the chrome on the uh, rear bumpers in real nice shape. Body lines down the passenger side of the car is the same as the driver's side. I mean, you know, when you talk about body lines, I don't know if you guys know what I'm referring to, but when you're looking at the rear quarter, you know, it's a large rear quarter on this car, and you're looking at the uh, passenger side door and you're looking at the front fender, are there any waves, are there any ripples, can you see any Bondo present? And the answer to that one is no. This car looks fantastic, it's got great lines to it. Chrome on both door handles is in good condition. Chrome on both mirrors are in good condition. This does have dual mirrors on it, which is not really common for the Chevelles. Um, passenger side, carpeting, door panel, armrest, uh, captain's chair, bucket seat, whatever you want to call it, uh, all in really, really good shape. This is a really nice car inside and out. Again, check out the door fitment. Not only are the uh, lines uniform, but also the uh, bottom of the door fits great to the rear quarter, down low to the rocker. Um, and then, of course, you know, your door fitment on the uh, driver's side here is good as well. Same thing with the hood fitment. Not only the fitment, but the gapping. Check it out. It's uniform, you know, down the uh, front here. And uh, it closes nice and flush to the tops of the uh, fenders. I did kind of skip, bypass the uh, passenger side front fender. Again, there's a 427 designation on there, which is not what's under the hood, but that car was badged, I guess at one time there was. Um, nobody just changed them out. And uh, driver's, or I'm sorry, passenger side front fender looks good as well. As I stated in the beginning of the video, these cars are extremely hot right now. Um, 66, 67, and 70 especially. Uh, we just sold a 66. Um, this probably will sell within a day or two of us posting it on our website. And I, uh, I got another 67 on the way that's actually a convertible. It's a four-speed car. So um, this car has a lot going for it. It's got a great look to it with the Craggers, um, the black vinyl top, you know, the black accents on the gold paint. The interior is in immaculate condition, and the fun part is this car hauls. But before we drive it, let's take it out and put it on the rack, put it in the air, and show you what the undercarriage looks like. 
fantastic, fantastic car, a car that I'd be uh, proud to sell and that you'd be proud to own. So uh, let's go outside and check it out underneath. Tomorrow morning, we gotta do engine run on this. Yeah. Or tonight, whatever. Underneath our fun 1967 Chevelle with a 502. Disc brakes up front. You can uh, see the front of the motor here. You got a nice clear visual of uh, not only the front seal, but uh, both sides of the oil pan. You can see it's nice and dry. Got a cross member going back to your high performance oil pan back here. Bottom of the filter's dry. Starter's dry, both sides of the oil pan dry. Headers, dual. Uh, flywheel is exposed. Uh, that is because down here in Florida, this was a Florida car, car we bought here in Florida. Guy was driving it, that keeps it cooler up there. Um, transmission pan's nice and dry. Speedo cable's dry. Tail shaft seal's dry. Floor pans, both sides look good. So do the frame rails. Dual mufflers, both of those look to be in good shape. Drum brakes in the rear. As I mentioned in the showroom, uh, got slicks on the back. Gas tank's in good shape, not dead and up, dinged up. 12 bolt rear. The chrome tips uh, we called out in the showroom during that presentation. Drop downs on both sides look good. You know, when I'm looking at those, I'm looking for excessive like Bondo or filler or anything like that, but nothing. It's nice. That's the undercarriage of our uh, 67 Chevelle. You, if you watch these videos, which a lot of people tell me that they do, uh, we do a lot of different cars and we stand underneath here and we show you that these cars are nice and dry, right? Because we're not in the business to advertise leaking cars or, uh, you know, we certainly wouldn't put a video up here with a car that's leaking. However, um, you know, if you're buying a classic car, keep something in mind. All of these cars are custom built. What I mean by that is, you know, they might have had three, four, 10, 20 owners throughout the years. They might have had three, four, five different motors in them. Um, guys tinkered with them in their backyard, raced them. Um, you know, who knows? Um, so you're, you're gonna develop leaks from time to time on a custom built car. These cars weren't built in a factory. I mean, I guess they were at one time. But what I'm getting at is, you know, today we're used to everything being precision, right? air conditioned seats, heated steering wheels, um, blind spot indicators in our mirrors, power seats, power windows, power door locks, power this, power that. I mean, the cars we're used to driving today not only are uh, built with precision technology, but have all the bells and whistles, you know. These cars here, these are um, time capsules. Um, everybody loves a 67 Chevelle, the look, you know, 70 Chevelle, uh, 69 Roadrunner, 70 Cuda. They're awesome cars. They're, they're fun to sell and they're fun to drive and they're fun to go to car shows and enjoy. Um, what I'm getting at with this speech is, you know, if you've never bought a classic car before, you know, some of you out there might own three, four, 10, 50 cars. I've dealt with people that have had collections. You guys know what I'm talking about. Um, if you've never bought a classic car, it's your first time, uh, you might want to visit us in person. Um, let us explain to you what is involved in buying and owning a classic car. Uh, let us show you around our showroom, visit our 25,000 square foot indoor air conditioned facility where we house all of our cars at. All of our cars are indoors, we don't have any cars outside. Um, you know, our cars are, you know, we sell cars from 20 grand up to 100 grand, 100 grand plus. Um, regardless of the amount of money you're looking to spend, come and look at the car in person yourself. You can rack it, look at it underneath just like I'm doing right now. You can drive it. You can look at the paint out in the sun, you can open up the hood, uh, check out the motor, check out steering, brakes, air conditioning if equipped, pop the trunk, rifle through that, we'll let you drive it. Um, it's, it's, it'd be a fun, memorable experience for both of us, for, for me meeting the buyer and um, for you shaking hands with the seller.
With that being said, we sell a lot of cars sight unseen. We make a lot of people happy. We do a lot of videos, photos. Um, we correspond a lot through email, text message. I answer phone calls, emails, and text messages from 5 a.m. until 10 p.m. You know, and, and I'm getting them from all over the world at all hours of the night. So um, we do a lot of sight unseen business and make a lot of people happy. Financing is available on these vehicles. The collector car lenders we work with will do up to a 10-year loan with approved credit. Um, your term is going to be based on your credit bureau, debt to income ratio, things of that nature. Um, no prepayment penalty if you paid off early. What's fun about financing one of these cars if you need to, you know, I've had cash buyers that have the ability to pay cash and they've ended up financing the car because you can use somebody else's money for two and three years. Um, you know, and the cars are holding steady, turn back around, sell out of it, and uh, get out what, out of it what you paid for it, or maybe even a little more in some cases. Or if you do take a loss, I can guarantee it's gonna be minimal. Uh, you know, it might be fun to drive a car for three years and only be two grand out of pocket instead of 20 grand like on the new cars, so. Let's set the car down on the ground right now, take it out on a test drive. This is the fun part, 502 67 Chevelle. Let's run it. Inside of our 1967, 502 Chevelle. We can start, I guess, with the wipers. They go slow across the uh, dry windshield there, but they're working. Um, turn signals. Driver's side's way over here, functioning. Passenger side, right there behind our uh, keychain. No horn. You know, we don't build these cars. We just sell these cars. We buy them as they are. Um, we're not in the restoration business. We're not a service center. We don't claim to be. We're a classic car showroom. I would love to know why eight out of every 10 cars we buy, the horn doesn't work. It's like, eh, we built the entire car or we, rest well, we built the motor. We don't need a horn now, so. We gotta fix the horn and like I said, eight out of 10 of them. This one does have a radio that functions. I don't know, um, you know, if you'll be able to hear that thing above this motor, but it works. Um, temp hasn't come up yet because we just started the car. Uh, we do have uh, oil pressure. So, um, 95,856 miles. Um, I don't know if that's actual miles or not. Uh, the title that we have on the car reads exempt. Oh. Sorry, when we were all the way to the left checking out the turn signals, I should have mentioned the fuel gauge does function. Um, we bought this car here in Florida and the guy was driving it. Um, and it's one of the few cars we have in the building that's probably got over a half tank of fuel in it. So we're good to go because we're about to burn a half tank of fuel once I drop the throttle. Um, what else? Center console's in good shape for its age. Dash pad I mentioned in the showroom's in nice condition. The dash overall, like even you can tell this is original, that's well cared for. Um, you know, super sport there. Um, crank windows, so we don't have to worry about showing you uh, power windows or anything. Headliner's in good condition. You saw the uh, dome light illuminate in the showroom. Sail panels are in good shape back there. Oh, let's see. See, you can see the uh, crack in the rear window better on the uh, inside than you can on the outside. But uh, there it is. So, let's take it for a drive, have some fun. Driving down the road in our Chevelle, it runs out nice. Uh, big block, and the temp is probably below where it should be. Uh, running right about probably 190, which is good for a 502. Um, speedometer, it's got a little bit of a bounce to it, not much, um, and it's fairly accurate. We're running about 45 miles per hour right now. Uh, response in the wheel is real good. Car's nice and tight. Uh, I let go of the steering wheel. The car doesn't want to drift one way or the other. Tracks down the road nice and straight. It's got a real nice ride to it. There's no vibrations in the car whatsoever. There's no tire vibration. There's no vibration when you step on the brakes. Nothing in the drivetrain. Nothing in the uh, shifter and the steering wheel and the brake pedal and the throttle and the floor. Car rides out real nice. Coming up to a traffic light here. 
I um, want you to notice two things. Number one, the ease in which the car stops. And then number two, um, you know, that the fact that when we are stopped, uh, the thing's not starving for fuel. It's not sitting there wanting to go, bah, 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 you know, and, and wanting to stall out or anything like that. So, the car has a real nice idle to it. Let me show you why I don't drive a sports car every day. We shut it down there. That's 75. That was to the floor. I'm sure you, I don't know if you can hear the tires in the video, but burned them out. This thing's got plenty of power. You won't be losing, uh, too many races, too many traffic lights in this car. Really nice car. What I like about when we drive these type of vehicles is because even though it has a 502 in it, I had a, um, a, a 65 Plymouth that was the same way, man. That car would haul ass, but if you want to drive it like a normal human being, you can drive it too. You know, it's not excessive. It's not, you know, built like a race car. This is, I mean, this is a muscle car, don't get me wrong, but, um, you know, it, it, it has a nice ride to it. You can drive it like a normal person. If you just want to drive it normal, you can too. You know, you can enjoy it. And then if you want to mash on the throttle, it'll move. So it's a great, great combo for a, for a car to have in a vehicle. 386-944-9219 is our contact phone number here in Daytona Beach. Hanksters.com is our website. Um, today we're going to throw up at least uh, 80 photos of this car, if not more, as well as this video presentation we're doing for you uh, right now. At full retail price, this vehicle does include shipping in the lower 48 United States, and it also includes a 12-month, 1,000-mile powertrain warranty. The warranty is going to cover internal components of the engine, the transmission, and the rear end. You'll have a hundred dollar deductible and then uh, the warranty will kick in um, on a covered repair now and you know understand the warranty you know these are muscle cars so they, they are not your 2021 corvette they are 30 40 50 60 year old vehicles they're all custom built you're going to have leaks they're going to leak oil. They're going to leak transmission fluid. They're going to leak, you know, antifreeze. Um, it's just the nature of the beast when you're maintaining for an older car. When you're maintaining an older car, there's going to be uh, those expenses that come with it. So don't be shocked if you have a, a dime size or a quarter size drop of oil in your driveway three months from now. You know, it's, it's, it's normal. Now, obviously, if you walk out there and you have a huge puddle underneath the car, you got another, you got a whole other story. But... Um, so as I was saying, um, is the price of the car negotiable? Yes, it most certainly is. However, if we negotiate the price of the car, the warranty comes off, and then we also uh, you know, negotiate the shipping, whether you have your own carrier, whether you're coming in trailer to car home, whether you're local to us here in Florida, um, whatever the case may be, um, you can pay our driver, you know, the driver we, we contract out upon delivery of the car, um, or you can go ahead and you can, like I said, get your own driver, come on down or up with a trailer and take it home, or uh, if you're local to us, drive it. Sorry, I can't break 80 for you guys, I got traffic, but uh, plenty of juice in this thing. Look, I still got a half tank of gas, so I didn't burn that much. I got some homeless guy clapping for me back there, waving an American flag. Hangsters.com, Hangsters Hot Rods, we are located in Daytona Beach, Florida. We'd love to earn your business, add you to our growing base of customers, not only throughout the United States, but throughout the world. Check us out. But before I go, look, I'm hot rodding the thing in 90 degree heat, and our temperature's still at 200. So we're good to go. Great car. We're back at the showroom and uh, check us out.